Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. In this video, I want to talk to you about a tool called the Flexbox Container. It's over here in the layout section of the toolbox. A Flexbox Container, as we drag one onto the canvas, may remind you, at first glance, of the layout grid. If you've worked with a layout grid, you might think that this is um, the same kind of tool. Well, it's similar in some ways, and in other ways it's very, very different. It has a completely different purpose. If you've worked with a layout grid, you know it's based on a, um, a container that snaps to the top, or the next topmost part of the page, and this one did as well. But unlike the layout grid, the Flexbox is just a single container. It's not going to have any cells or columns. It's just going to be a container that we can put objects into, for example, images, that will relate to each other a certain way, depending on how we configure this Flexbox. It's very practical, and it's better for you to just watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some images and put them in here. Now, I happen to grab some images that have numbers on them. And the reason I did that is because it's going to make it easier for you to see in this demonstration uh, how these images relate because they're in a particular numerical order. I'll show you what I mean. Now, obviously, you can use any images you want, your logo, a picture of yourself, uh, any image any image can go into this or any object can go into this. I happen to be using numbered ones for the sake of demonstration and clarity. Here's what I mean. When you grab an object and you put it into the flex box, it will snap to its position, in this case, the center, because that's how it's set up. Now, if I grab another object like this one, and I'm going to put it over here, does it really matter if I put it over here, it's still going to go to where it belongs. Now where it belongs is in the second position and evenly spaced because that's how this flex box is currently configured. And we'll look at the configuration here in a second. Now if I take the number four and I wanted to put it in the center like this, that's not going to happen. It's going to take the next position available, which in this case is the third position and evenly spaced. So notice the reason I'm doing this is so you can see that when you put objects into the flex box, they take their rightful spot. Let's put these in the right order now. You see what happened? They go in by the sequence. Their sequence is determined by when they were put inside the flex box. And that's where they will appear. Put the five in here and we'll put the six in here. And there they are. Now, first of all, let's look at how this Flexbox is configured. We do that by double clicking on it and looking at its properties. Right now, it's the direction is row, and we're going to almost always use row. We'll talk about these other settings, but these are very rare, so it's almost always going to be row. It also has no wrap. We're going to normally use wrap, but I'm going to show you the difference, so we'll leave that. Justified content, again, there are several settings, but I'm going to show you the basic default settings so you can see what it does, how we align the objects, and how the content wraps if if it does wrap is set here. There's some other settings here. But the point is I want you to see how these objects behave in their default setting if we do a preview. So I'm clicking F5 so we can bring up a browser. And here's the page in a browser. And you can see there's our numbers. Now you'll notice that they're all nice and evenly spaced. And as I shrink or narrow the browser, they will travel with it. It's kind of nice. This is a responsive design. So they're accommodating the width of the browser. However, there is a little bit of a problem. Watch what happens. If we go too small and they start to bump into each other, at some point, they're not going to be very happy because they're just going to have to stop. And they aren't going to fit at all. So I've got my browser pretty narrow here and they just kind of scrunched up. There was no way for them to accommodate the window unless we go down to the scroll bar, and that's not what we want for a responsive design. We want them to actually fit. So here's how we do that. So let's, let's get this out of the way, and let's change this to a wrap flex instead of a no wrap. And as you might guess, they're going to now wrap around. So we're going to click F5 to bring up that browser window again. And I'll bring it into focus here into the camera. I've got it on another screen, so let me bring it over here. There we are again. And again, they are flexing and they are responding. But watch what happens now when we get too tight because we have wrap. That's exactly what they do. The 6 is moving out of the way. It's wrapping down to the next line and ending up in the center. 
And as we keep going, look at what the five does. And you'll notice that they stay evenly spaced. We'll do it again. We get another evenly spaced and they stay in their sequence. And once again, one, two, three, four, they stay in their sequence. So this is what happens when we have a wrap. Now I'm showing you this particular setting for the Flexbox because frankly, it's gonna be the most common use of the Flexbox. So even though it has a number of other options, and you can look at those and play with some of these, and I'll show you what a few of them do. To be honest with you, most of the time you're gonna use this setting. This is the one you're gonna to wanna to remember. So basically the default changed to wrap, and you're probably gonna be good to go with that. But you do have some control over what happens. So for example, if you wanted these to be reversed, you would click row reverse, let me click OK, and they have reversed. You can also put them in the form of a column. And again, I think this would be rare, but it is a feature that you can implement. So we're going to click OK. You won't see them in a column, though, until we actually do an F5. And I'll do an F5, and I'll bring the page into focus, and you can see that they did line up in a column. And in fact, there was another one here, column reverse, and they would do just what you think. They'd restack in a column, but in the opposite direction. So most of the time, they're going to be in this flex direction, in row. So we'll leave that as it is. Also, you can affect how they justify. Right now, they're set to space around. You can change this if you want them to flex from the start of the flex box. You would change that to flex start. Click OK, and you can see that they start there. If you want to put that at the end, you can do so. And let's do a quick F5 so you can see what I mean by that. So in other words, they start off at the end of the flex box, and they stay there until they have to wrap. So they're hugging the right side of the screen, or the end of the flex box, and then again they wrap. But notice it wraps on the end. And so it's just another option for how you might want your objects in a flex box to behave. So let's go ahead and hide that. The other one was center. We have them on end, but you can center. There's also space between. You can play with those. Should be pretty obvious what those do. If you put it on center, in other words, they start in the center right next to each other. But what I had them on in the default was um, space around. And it sort of spaces, in other words, they're evenly spaced throughout the flex box. Again, that's the most common. Some of the other settings are going to be um, how the objects behave vertically. That's what this one is. The align items, that's talking about their vertical behavior. There's also the align content, and this is actually how they behave when they wrap. So if you have wrapping on, this is going to affect that wrap. They, do they wrap from the start? Do they wrap down to the center? Do they wrap in a uh, to the end that kind of a thing okay so we'll leave that um, start and you can play with that now there's a couple other things you should know about the flex box container it has a style like a lot of objects in other words it can have a background it can have a border and a colored border a different style border all the things that a lot of objects can have and like a layout grid it can be turned into a form that means if you click this button you can actually drag form objects into a flex box and make it a form. It just would be a flexible one, which would be really great for a responsive website. It can be used in the um, smooth scrolling effect. I have a video about that and this object can be used. And of course, you can have different padding. Right now, it's by default, it's set to 10. That's 10 pixels all the way around in this case, but you can adjust that here. So let's spend more time though on the actual flexibility part of this. Now this is something kind of interesting. While the Flexbox has its own settings like I just showed you, each of the objects inside the Flexbox can also be affected a certain way. In fact, a really unique way. Here's what I mean. If we click an object, we're gonna select the object that has the one. I'm gonna go up to Arrange, and I'm gonna go over here to Flexbox. I need to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I went to the Arrange menu, and under that menu, there are these Flexbox settings. Now, because I selected the one, or this image, and I click on Flexbox, this attribute is going to apply to this image. There's its ID, in fact. It's index image one in my object manager and in my uh, properties uh, inspector. This is this object. 
So I can actually affect the way it behaves. Now this is really interesting and you'll want to play with this. We won't spend a lot of time because there's so many possible variations, but you'll get the idea. I can actually make this object grow accordingly as the page changes in size. Here's what I mean. Let's make this be, everything's by default is zero. Let's make this thing be a one, a size one, so to speak, okay? I'm gonna click okay and you'll notice, oh, it got quite a bit bigger. This is what size one looks like now. Don't pay any attention to the fact that it's pixelated. This is just for demonstration purposes. Let's do the same thing with two. I go to the arrange and the flex box now applies to index image two. And instead of a one, let's make this a two. It's gonna be quite a bit bigger in growth compared to the other one. Watch what happens. Okay, so now this is a size one. See how it's relative? This is a size two. In other words, twice as big as this object. And there's zeros. These are all zeros. Let's select this one, go to the arrange, flex box. Again, we're on this image. Let's make this a three. So it'll be three times the size compared to the other ones. Okay, so you can see that the one is now smaller because we have these things that are relative. This is three times bigger than this one, and this is twice as big as this one. These are just set to zero. Now, why would you do that? Well, the best way to know why you would do that is to click F5 and see what happens and how these behave. So again, they're still behaving with the flexibility that we would expect, and they're still going to wrap because that's how it's set. But notice that they scale down. As we go to a smaller sized viewport, a smaller sized browser, look at what they're doing. They're staying relative to each other. The one, two, and three are still relative in size. But then as they wrap, they can adjust a little bit and they shrink down again and then they wrap and they can adjust a little bit. So this is a very unique thing that you can do in 90 Second Website Builder. I don't know of any other software that gives you this kind of literal flexibility. But by playing with these settings, you can see that you can make your objects relate to each other exactly the way you want them to by changing their relative size and using this Flexbox setting. One other thing before we wrap up this video, you'll notice that you could also adjust the margin and the padding around each object. So if I select the four this time, we go to arrange and we click on margin. And so you can see I can change the margin for all. In fact, let's do that. We'll exaggerate it so we can see what that does on all four sides. Click OK. And it's just created more space. Now, there's also padding which is a slightly different setting. So we're gonna do that with number five. We'll go to arrange, select padding, and let's do that with something. Let's go five, just so we have something different here to look at. And it's a subtle difference, but there's the difference between padding and margin is very subtle, but it'll matter at some point. So padding is the space around the object and margin is sort of the space on how it relates to the rest of the flex box to get technical on you. Okay, so hopefully that is enough information to give you um, some details and to give you a launch point to where you can play with this great tool. Again, you don't have to put images in here. I used images and I used images with numbers because I wanted you to see uh, how this behaves, but you can put just about anything you want in here and um, within reason, you're, you're gonna wanna stick with things that are uh, prone to be responsive, like we were talking about with the uh, layout grid tool, and play with the flex box. It's just, it's a simpler tool than the layout grid, and a great way for you to make your objects uh, respond to each other, and f be more flexible on the page, and make a really good responsive website with 90 Second Website Builder.